Hey everyone, it's VM Campos, Magic Fan. I've got a deck tech video for you. I'll be showing it to you here in Magic Arena. This is my mono black vampire tribal deck. So I'm going to go over to my decks and show you what this deck is all about. So it's mono black, 60 cards. I'll switch over to this layout over here uh, to show you the mana curve. If you look at it like this, this is a 2.3 average curve, 24 creatures, 14 non-creatures. So it's a go-wide strategy. Lots of creatures, uh, kind of a black aggro deck to some degree. Mana cost of um, average of 2.3. It's uh, pretty much uh, vampires, 20 vampires. So let's break this down. In the one mana cost, we've got a full playset, four, of Knight of the Ebon Legion. This is a vampire knight. This is rare. It's a one-two. But if you pay three mana, one black, two more, this gets plus three, plus three, and gains death touch. Well, the cool thing is if the opponent lost life, four or more, at the end of the turn, this Ebon Legion gets a plus one, plus one counter. So this can get bigger and bigger and bigger. And when you turn it into a 4-5 death touch creature, nothing's going to stand in its way. Another one drop, turn one play, is Vampire of the Dire Moon. It's a 1-1 with death touch and lifelink. Okay, so lifelink is going to be an important bit of synergy on these other cards I'll just show you in a moment. Blood Burglar. It's a 2-2 two -two for 2. And it's got lifelink on my turn. Besides that, it's a chump blocker. So again, lifelink will be important coming up. Full playset. Before rotation happens, I'm putting the Dusk Legion Zealot into my deck. It's a 1-1 one, one for 2, but draws you a card. You lose 1 life. Well, if turn 1, you drop the Vampire of the Dire Moon, and turn 2, you summon the Legion Zealot, you'll get that life back easily when this attacks. But then you get card draw. After rotation, this, this guy needs to be removed, and we'll see how we do that later after rotation. Sovereign's Bite. This will also rotate out, but for the moment, it does 3 damage, you gain 3 life. Again, life gain will be important as we get to it. Plus, putting your opponent that much closer to their grave is guaranteed by this card. And look at this art. It's some of the most vicious and violent I've ever seen. Soren's Thirst. A little bit of creature removal. Double black, two damage to a creature, you gain two life. Okay, here's why the life is so important. Here's the Bloodthirsty Arrow list for three. It's a two, three, flyer. When you gain life, put a plus one. Whenever you gain life, put a plus one. Imagine that you've dropped two Vampires of the Dire Moons, turn one and two. And then by turn three, you play the Arrow list. When those Vampires of the Dire Moon attack and each one does damage, you will put plus two, plus two on this aerialist. That'll be a four, five in the air. What about when you kill your opponent's creature with two damage here and you gain two life? That'll increase the aerialist. What if you do three damage directly to the opponent and gain life? That'll increase the aerialist. So it's going to get bigger and bigger. We have Soren, Imperious Bloodlord. This is the one that once these other things rotate, such as the Zealot, you could think about putting a few more of them if you want. This is a three casting cost Planeswalker. Amazing. You get four loyalty plus one. Target creature you control gains death touch and lifelink. If it's a vampire, put a permanent plus one plus one counter. So I make even your one one stronger and stronger with a plus one. And as you're gaining life, you're making your life harder to deal with and you're making your area list larger. Another plus one. You may sacrifice a vampire. When you do, Soren deals three damage to any target and you gain three life. So that could go to their creature, to their planeswalker, or right to the dome. Minus three, which you can do right away. Minus three. You may put a vampire creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. So let's say you have the choice on your turn three to summon your aerialist or your Soren. You can do both. You can summon Soren, minus him three right away, and get your two three. And hopefully you've got your lifelink dire moon or your burglar to pump up the aerialist. We've got murder to take care of just about anything. 
And then at the high end, four drop. This one's interesting. This is not a vampire. It's an honorary vampire. It's a 3-3 three, three for 4. But whenever a swamp enters the battlefield under your control, choose one. So this has sort of swamp landfall. Either draw a card and lose one life. So every time you drop a swamp, you gain a card. Amazing. And one life loss is nothing. Or it deals 2 damage to any target and you gain 2 life. Again, more life gain for the aerialist plus 2 damage to anything. I've played games where I drop a presence right away on turn five and then drop the land and I do its thing. I've had turns where I already have one presence on the field. I play another presence. I drop another swamp and I get to do these things twice. Amazing. Mana base of 22 swamps because everything's monocolored. And again, our curve is pretty low, 2.3. I've actually run this with 20 swamps, and it seems to sometimes work. It's very dangerous, but it can be done. Let's look at the sideboard. Let me switch views this way, actually. Sideboard. So we've got Disfigure. Minus two, minus two to target creature for one black mana at an instant. So if you've got a couple of them in hand, you can do up to four damage. Blade Brand. Give your creature death touch and draws you a card. So a little card draw there, plus taking out a big creature. Something that to do after you sideboard. And definitely some great sideboard cards here. Noxious Grasp. For two mana instant, destroy target Planeswalker. Or creature. If it's green or white. And dealing with Teferi, dealing with Nyssa, dealing with Vraska is no problem. You gain life, and again pumping up your Aerialist. And lastly, okay... Destroy any number of target Planeswalkers. The end for two black mana. So here's how you deal with a Chandra or a Narset, the Elder Spell. So that's the deck so far. What do you think about it? You've got a big aggro strategy with a lot of little creatures that can get bigger, increasing your life total quickly, doing some shenanigans with this presence. Let me know in the comments what you would do to improve the deck or any thoughts at all. This has been VM Campos and I'll see you in Markov Manor.